Good evening, church. I have been reading in the Old Testament about the story of Jacob. And when he got deceived by Laban, he gave Leah instead of Rachel. And then I was also, in my study, I'm going through the uh, New Testament in 2 Peter, and I've been reading the 2 Peter over and over again. If somebody wants a good method of studying the Bible, John MacArthur has a wonderful method, and it's a simple method. You read the same book over and over for a month. Then you start to understand what's going on in a short book. If it's a long book, you split it up into seven. That way you can at least go through seven chapters for an entire month and then go to the next seven chapters. And after a couple months, you'll be able to know the book really well. Well, I have these two, the Old Testament about Jacob and then the second Peter about the return of Christ. And I didn't find a parallel, nor was I looking for a parallel. But when I was reading how Jacob was tricked by Laban, I saw something that got my attention. I would like to share it with all of you. Let's go to Genesis 29, 15. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what should your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled. And then later in 20, verse 25, he says, it came to pass in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this that you have done to me? Was it not Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? And Laban said, it must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week and we will give you the one also for the service which you will serve me still another seven years. Then Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as wife also. For a long time when I was young, I always thought that Jacob worked 14 years and then got Rachel. But when you clearly, when you, when you kind of look into the text, you clearly find out that it was actually seven years and one week. And then he was married to Rachel, and then he had to basically fulfill his debt for another seven years, totaling 14 years. And now in the New Testament, I've been reading the second Peter and focusing on chapter 3, and thinking a lot about the return of Jesus Christ. So let's read 2 Peter chapter 3. Beloved, I now write to you the second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by a way of a reminder, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is this promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and the perdition of the ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance." 
But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since these things will be dissolved, what manner of person ought you be in the holy conduct and godliness? Looking for the hastening and coming day of the God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. From the morning service, remember, fervent in spirit. Same word is used, with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent. There's another word from morning service. Be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of the Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking to them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist with their own, with their own destruction. They do not they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now let's go back to Genesis 29, 20 again. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed only a few days to him. Why? Because of the love he had for her. Now, 2 Peter 3, 8. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I found in both something I've never seen before, which helped me understand why the Lord is delaying his arrival. Jacob loved Rachel, and he served for seven years, and they flew by so quickly. And it seemed like a couple of days. God is delaying because of his love for us. He, he does not want anyone to perish, but all come to repentance. We are called beloved. Christ loves the church. Christ lo died for his church. Christ is long-suffering towards his church. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. And Jesus is patiently waiting for you. Jacob waited patiently for Rachel. Jesus is waiting patiently for his bride, the church, to get her lamp ready. The king of kings is on his way. And I want to end with 8 and 18 on chapter 3, 2 Peter. But beloved, do not forget this one thing. With the Lord, one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Let's pray.